listening to The Peach Pit, and before beginning this interview, I'd like to take a moment to give a word of condolence to all of the friends and family of Cale Charlton, and of course his bandmates in the band from Vancouver called Paramnesia. Uh, he recently passed away, and even when I think back to when I talked to Derek Hill, the drummer from Paramnesia, we took a moment during that interview to just talk about Cale and how he was so well known throughout the scene as such a great guy uh as these things usually are it was very untimely and he has kids so if you'd like to send a word of your support or to show your support in another way they have a gofundme go check them out on instagram at paramnesia van and uh, you can learn more about that and without further ado let's get to the interview from far off, I finally found the infamous friends formerly familiar to fans as Farm with a PH. Hey, hey. <laughs> hello, I'm talking hello. with the trio from Kelowna, and you can catch them next week on Friday, on July 28th, at the Okanagan Tattoo Show. They're also go going to be playing in Nelson at the Massif Music Fest in September. That's Massif with an F, not a PH. I am trying to make it confusing. <laughs> Matt, Tegan, Luke, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to the pit. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's great pleasure. to be here. The Zoom land. <laughs> so I need to know how this all started. How did it begin? How did you guys meet each other? Ooh, we met oh. at, uh, well, we've all known each other from different avenues for like eight, back, years, eight, years, eight years. Yeah, but we met separately, but we all converged in the same room at uh, our dearly departed Munin's Post. Had a little concert, had a night out, a couple of beers. We all met and thought it'd be a good fit. So uh, we started jamming, and right away, you know, it just clicked. Yeah. Just kind of made sense. Yeah. Good. So you had some common bands that you were all into? What, what were some of those? Ooh, the early I don't days. know about all three of us. <laughs> I know we really all like Between the Buried and Me. Yeah. yeah and I know... Yeah. We all like Dream Theater. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rush. And Rush. Rush. Yeah. 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 We all kind of come from very different avenues in yeah. that sense. And now there's got to be some bands that you guys don't necessarily agree on. Like, what are your own, like, specific oh, there's tastes? So many. <laughs> too many to name. <laughs> there's too many to name. We all. We all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not the most obnoxious thing you've ever heard. <laughs> 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 But you had to settle on your name at some point. So how did you guys come up with the name Farm? Well, we had a list of about <laughs> 50, probably, yeah, 50 to 100 names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we were kind of like leaning towards one and then kind of look across the street at this place. We were jamming and there's a pharmacy there. And the pole was kind of in the way of the... A save farm. <laughs> so yeah. we kind of looked at it and we're like, farm, that's kind of funny. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we all, I suppose, agreed on it at that point. And yeah, if we never saw that, we very well might have landed on old people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A runner up. Yeah. Old, people. old people was the runner up. <laughs> Which could have gone really bad because we play for a lot of old people. Like a lot. Of well, Especially main... on tour, we played for a lot of old people. Their target audience. That's our target audience. <laughs> well, I mean, like with the rush, it kind of like carries over, right? The rush influence. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We're thinking about doing the nursing home circuit soon. <laughs> At least you know that they'll be there. <laughs> Good money. Good fans. Good food. Good food. And you all appreciate it. And, and you get to watch a magic show afterwards. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So how would you guys describe your sound? Because I'm sure you get asked that a lot. It's like prog rock. <laughs> we, got stoner, we got some stoner rock mixed in there. Sometimes we got our upcoming EP, we got some blast beats mixed in there. Yeah, a little hodgepodge, a little mishmash. Hyper stoner. Yeah, hyper stoner. Aggressive, progressive. Yeah. <laughs> Happy music. <laughs> so if, if there were two bands that got together and gave birth to Farm, what would those two bands be? Well, what did the people say on tour? There was, what was it? Uh, it was 
Primus and who? Primus and Mastodon? Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. We get a lot of like Rush meets Black Sabbath. Yeah. Primus meets Mastodon. Yes meets Slayer. Voivod <laughs> meets who else? Yeah. <laughs> Simon meets Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Who performed the keyboards on the album? Oh, yeah, that was me. Oh, it's kind of my love of that old, uh, he's, yeah, it's you know, kind of the classics, the keyboardy pla- classics, like all that. Yes, I love the Mellotron that had to be on like almost every song, and like the Hammond <laughs> B3 organs. What was the other one? The Glock and Spiel. Spiel. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to take lessons when I was a little boy, so at least you know they haven't totally been squandered. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the way the album sounds to me, it's like you guys totally captured how the band sounds live. So in my mind, that's perfect. And the the synthesizer and the keyboards are just like this extra little layer of goodness in the album, right? Do you ever think you're ever going to try to like have that live, like have someone play keyboards? Yes. Could be a possibility. Yeah. Well, right, in a perfect yeah. world, I'd like to have both of us have keyboards. Yeah. Okay. Where it gets a little loop. Pedal. I'd like a synthesizer, honestly. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like. Even like Black Sabbath in the day, they'd have a keyboard player on stage, just like behind a curtain. He doesn't get to be named or seen. <laughs> you know, he's doing it live. Yeah, we can, you know, he can carry the gear. You can kind of bully him and you know, <laughs> do the manual labor. So if you think uh, if there is keyboards live, it'll probably be something you guys try to do yourselves or won't be like another member. We'll try. We'll definitely yeah, try. We'll try, yeah. to, we'll try. We're trying to avoid it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we got these extra legs and arms that are just doing nothing half of the time. <laughs> so what about the artwork for the album? I I didn't see a credit to who the artist was or where this came from. No, that's done by my girlfriend, uh, Grace White. <laughs> <laughs> it's his girlfriend. It's a recent thing, too. So, you know, we... Uh... Now we get free artwork done now that they started dating. <laughs> yes! <laughs> real power play. Yeah. Yeah. So she... What about that art did you guys like? What was there something particular about it? Made it like thinking of all three of us. So, yeah, just kind of sent it. And then for our friend Braden Farr did all the layout for that. He plays with like a polyon and is now Omni and Nile. Um, so, he, they kind of, it's kind of like a collab. Like, uh, she does like, it's all like, uh, pencil crayon yeah. drawing it's then, very human yeah. i like that about it yeah dream team they did our tour artwork yeah. um our upcoming ep and same same dream team working on that together oh they're on that eh yeah oh good yeah. that's good <laughs> well we're all learning new things today <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how did you guys approach the lyrics um i mean <laughs> basically just uh ripping off jrr tolkien at every, <laughs> yeah. at every corner if i get a writer's block if there's kind of like a general theme of the song i'd like flip to somewhere in the lord of the rings that's sort of similar and draw inspiration i'd always have like a thesaurus open <laughs> that's it's cool because like that really explains the fantasy element but i i thought that there was a lot of outer space themes there, yeah there there is that too Elves uh, in outer space. Well, man. yeah, I mean, there's uh, the HP Lovecraft, and uh, yeah, definitely just just piece work, like piece by piece. Like I think some of the lyrics are. Uh, I mean, I can't even read at that level. I can read at like a fourth grade level, but just <laughs> with help and sitting down and taking time with it, it kind of all from there. So, how was recording at the Ark House? Fantastic. Like, Fantastic. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's such a good time. Yeah, yeah. Adam's awesome. He yeah. took really good care of me. Yeah, Adam Whitkey, he knows his stuff. Yeah. He's quick, affordable too. Like yeah. I've been to recording studios where it's like some guy's basement. He's got like, uh, like a bong made out of like a pot, like a water bottle. It's just covered <laughs> in grime. There's like <laughs> washing machines running, and this guy's charging the same price as this real professional studio in town. Yeah, he's so quick too. Even with the edits and the mix, he can like drop a thing in here. And... He gets excited too, which yeah. is always nice. Like yeah. he's like, oh, like I actually, like, he's like, I worked on this for like five hours last night. I just couldn't stop. Like, <laughs> like, stuff like that. Yeah, you can have a beer with him, and yeah. 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 So do you, do you think you'll work with them again? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Sometime yeah. for sure. Yeah, I think so. If we, you know, do another full length, um, yeah. it'd be really good to work with him again, and uh, kind of build on what we already have. 
and, and, you know, maybe try new things. Um, and now we know what to expect with him um, as far as how he works with us and, and the space that he has and the equipment that he uses. So I think uh, it'd be really fruitful to go back to him again. Very fruity. Fruity. <laughs> fruity times. Lots of nice fruits to pick. <laughs> like peaches. Yeah, peaches. Are nice. <laughs> they come in a can. <laughs> <laughs> there, man. Oh, I'm gonna have that stuck in my head all night now. Yeah, you're welcome. I am, man. It's a, man, it's a peach. Uh, sorry, I love that bad <laughs> tweet. Oh, you get me all distracted. This next question is re for you, Tegan. You oh, seem wow. to have done a, a lot of the editing for the music videos. Oh yeah, yeah. That's is that something? Like, is, that, is that what you want to continue to do? Time. Not really, no. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Not so, I just did it because the, like it was the easiest, cheapest way to do it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I used to do it when I was a kid for fun. So when I was like, shit, like I got to like, I mean, I gotta make a music video for this. Just kind of went back to my child brain and made it work. And it, it turned out nice. Like I, they're fun. I think it kind of represents like the goofiness of our band. And, like, yeah, just kind of the raw, real, whatever. Did we steal the software? Did we did some it was, No, it was just free. Oh, no, it was all <laughs> it legitimate was, software. Yeah, no, it, it, was, it, it was all... It actually was just a free software, too. Though, okay, like, good. Even, like, it was good. that cheap. Like, I didn't even go out of my way to pirate one. I just looked up, like, it was DaVinci Resolve, the free version. Oh, yeah, that was a free version. Yeah. That's yeah. good. <laughs> all so, legal. Vortex wasn't really a concept album, but it did have a lot of themes that went throughout it. Well, one thing I did notice that Rat Milk and the Time Borer were both a part one. <laughs> oh no! Here so will there go. will there be a part two? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Both of them. Great time. Yeah. 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 Maybe part three is gonna come first. Yeah. You can take it wherever you wanna. <laughs> it's a whole saga. Yeah. The second one. Yeah. You just. But there won't even be a second one. It's, it's a trilogy. <laughs> The whole far multiverse we're setting up. <laughs> Soon we'll have an animated TV series. The second one was so bad we couldn't release it, so, but it, it still is the second one. <laughs> all right, let's get into the tour because you guys just recently went on a massive tour all the way to the other side of Canada and back. So I need to know a little bit about that. Was that your first time doing a big tour like that? Yes. Yeah, for That's this band, yeah. The biggest thing i've ever done so were there some places that were like on your bucket lists just wherever i just wanted to, we were just decided we were just gonna only play canada this year so yeah. like just tried to get as many dates up until quebec basically and stop there and i guess our turnaround point and see how many places say yeah like we're down so i think we ended up quebec. Some, yeah we ended up at some strange places and met a lot of awesome people and had a lot of yeah it was awesome man like i've been on a couple of tours before this that were the same length and this one was just awesome what were some of the most memorable places that you got to visit <laughs> i think about quebec every day oh yeah we love Quebec. i love yeah. quebec i had yeah. a great time in montreal like personally yeah yeah montreal and uh Niagara Just Falls. Even small yeah. town Quebec was Yeah, incredible. Niagara Falls was awesome. Uh, we yeah. played with a band there called Sons of Arrakis. And um, it, they were just such good people. Um, some of the most knowledgeable and, and, and um, seasoned musicians that I've ever had the pleasure to play with. Yeah, um, fantastic album they put out. Yeah, too. they put out a really good album. And uh, they put us up with really good shows, accommodations. Yeah. Um, they kind of guided us around. Yeah. Luckily, Lucas is bilingual, but when Lucas wasn't around, you know, they still, they still helped me with communication and they still, you know, taught me a few things. And, and actually, they taught me a lot more than just a few things. They taught me a lot. I learned a lot from those guys. And um, learned how to be a man. Yeah. I'm not the yeah. same person I was. That's for sure. yeah. I think uh, Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, was the peak, though. The yeah, yeah, that, that was, was wild. We played at East Indian Restaurant. Uh, on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. <laughs> called the Spice Trail. And we got awesome, Good amazing food. Good uh, curries. Food. Oh, yeah. The sweet lady that we had. Uh, <laughs> yes. Prince here. Albert, Saskatchewan is just the shining jewel of this country. Yeah. yeah. It sits Honestly. atop the crown. Did you get your yeah. guitar fixed up? Yeah, yeah, we got our guitars fixed up by one of the other guys that were playing that night in the other bands yeah. um 
and he, yeah, he, he literally just took it into his house. He asked us to stop there before we went to the spice trail and yeah, he like set my guitar up. He set loops. He fixed his buzzing and it was incredible. And yeah, yeah. for a, for a Wednesday night, there was people there and they were really digging it. And it was, it was really cool. So in other words, it sounds like there's a lot of places that you were kind of underrated that ended up being pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Timmins, every, yeah. Ontario. Like, yeah. Every awesome. place that we thought was going to be like pretty rough or maybe, you know, would be kind of a, 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 like a sleepy, a sleepy town. show. Yeah. Um, always ended up crazy. And the ones that we thought would be really like crazy were sleepy. It was, it was yeah. nuts. Yeah. It was nuts. Quebec was like all around, like just a, those were some busy shows. Yeah, those were good. Um, Southern Ontario was very quiet. It was a very quiet um, couple of gigs. And, um, yeah, you, you just never know what to expect. You have no idea what you're going, especially with a DIY kind of system where yeah. you're just talking to promoters and you're just talking to people that you don't know in places you've never been, um, where people don't know your name. You know, it's it was quite a gamble. And every time it was a surprise, it was craziness. What advice would you give to any other band that's planning a big tour like that, other than having someone bilingual? Just, just, yeah, get someone bilingual, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, you sleep at the Flying J. Yeah, 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 Flying J's, yeah. Flying if you sleep J's in, your friend. Yeah, if you're sleeping in a van at the Flying J, it's not weird. If you're sleeping in a van in downtown Toronto, it's very weird. Yeah. <laughs> and there's good acoustics in the bathrooms at the Flying J's. You'll... uh you sit beside some truckers and you make a little symphony with them. <laughs> angry, angry. Especially when you're in the States at the Flying J next to the truckers and there's all that weird food with the different greases in them and uh, <laughs> the saturated fats. You get a whole different, it's like a, it's like a tenor saxophone sitting beside you. <laughs> Whereas, would you describe yourself more as a woodwind? Yeah, yeah, like an oboe. <laughs> He's a piccolo. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm more of a stand-up face. <laughs> I know you guys have played a bunch of shows around here before you went out on your tour, so it probably got to the point where you knew you, all of your songs so inside and out that you could play them like with your eyes closed. But there's got to be one song that still really stands out. Like, what's your favorite song to play live? Ooh, honestly i like playing embryo a lot oh yeah with yeah. the wall it's like it's kind of like a groovy little dance yeah number. it's just like nice simple like groove to slam out and it gets people dancing a lot of the time so it's nice yeah it's like a pump up one yeah i like i like playing uh orbiting the vortex it's like a whole journey and uh, you really get to see who's like a fair weather fan who's not because he's gonna stand there for nine and a half minutes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. some people it's like okay i'm gonna go for a pee now or get a <laughs> but the people who are into it are super into it it's like you've all gone on a little journey together by the end <laughs> yeah i'd say conquer is my favorite because it's just constantly moving it's uh just, yeah constantly not much space in between any of the notes <laughs> he goes up to the microphone to the crowd he says put your hands up put your hands up there's something i actually wanted to get at uh luke you have developed this on stage persona of of sorts you kind of sometimes talk like an auctioneer where, <laughs> like how, how how did you develop this where does this come from oh man i mean i i used to say back in the day i just uh was in the band for the comedy and the humor of it. The music was all secondary, so I could make my little promo vid videos on Instagram. But uh, <laughs> oh, I just like the humor and just not to take ourselves crazy serious all the yeah, time. He's, he's a comedian. He's first. a big fan of comedy. <laughs> like, he's the one yeah. out of us checking out comedy night at Denenzi's and comedy night at Dakota's yeah, and yeah. going to driving the comedy shows out of town. Yeah, like, like out of town obscure yeah. comedy shows. Yeah, yeah. It was like Sean yeah. Collins in town and yeah. I don't know if he's been relevant for years now. <laughs> no, he's he's still, still yeah, up. he's here. But he's yeah. he's still there. Even like the whole Primus thing, like it's no secret that I just walk around stealing everything that guy does but he's all his songs he's these little different characters and uh, just a little rascally goofball so i think that <laughs> kind of rubs off on me 
<laughs> That's great. So you guys are already working on some new songs, right? Oh, they're done. Yeah, they're done. New songs we're working on, on new new songs now. Yeah, we're about right the second full length now. Okay, so is it there's like going to be an EP and then another yeah. full length? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we wrote all these ones during COVID, yeah. so they're all squirrely and weird and <laughs> frustrating, <laughs> anxiety, and janky, yeah. Yeah, ADHD. Yeah, yeah. So that's an interesting note. So everything that's on Vortex was written pre-pandemic, and then the yeah. upcoming app. EP is okay. Okay. Yeah, During we're, pandemic. We're like, yeah, like, what, like one song a year we wrote? We're still, <laughs> yeah, we're right. practicing all the time. But... <laughs> yeah, we were in the middle of like recording Vortex. So just we so much. Like music. trying to tour, make music, maybe, like just launch this thing off the ground. So that we're, like the writing really had to take a back step, like with all the other stuff we kind of had to put up. But, yeah. Now we're back, though. We're back, right? Would you say that the writing process has changed a lot from, from how you guys used to do it in the beginning? I think it's going to go back to what it was. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, we all just kind of collaborate. Like get in the room and come with a riff or he'll just have a beat, kind of like a janky old drum beat, and then we'll just try to try to fit something over there. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You come to a jam with like, an idea of how your riff's going to be, when you leave and it's all Willy Wonka. Yeah, and, like I, yeah, I'll, I'll put like Nobody's four leaving put, with the part they came with. Yeah, I'll put like four <laughs> riffs together and I'll lay them out and then by the time it's done, it's just completely sideways. And yeah, like, everyone's and I, just surrendering. Every time I'm writing like, for the ah, band, like, I don't expect it to ever turn out what my, my vision is because it's just like, yeah. there's no point. No. There's no point in it. Just make them, make them work together and then the, we'll all get together and, like he said, Willy Wonka. It. That's <laughs> kind of the word that we use. We gave the snakes and ladders. <laughs> yeah. The old slippery pickle. Yeah. Just try to confuse each other more. Yeah, we try to confuse each other. Make each other more angry and frustrated. <laughs> and be like, why am I doing this? <laughs> so it's good. It's a healthy relationship. <laughs> How would you describe the direction that you guys want to go in? Ooh. Well, I mean, we try to keep the groove in there, but I think there's kind of like a sentiment of wanting to one up it, which is it's hard. You want to make it more confusing and like weirder and jankier and push that boundary, but then at the yeah. same, you want it. We want people to be able to like kind of enjoy it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be able to stand there and, uh... It's gonna be more crew oriented. Than I the think EP yeah. I think the sure. next one will be yeah. The EP is chaos. Yeah, it's chaos. It's chaos, but, but definitely we're gonna try and groove it down. Yeah, maybe add some new elements like like yeah. we're saying like add those synths and keyboards in and try to pull that off live. And, It'd yeah. be nice to write with the synths and keys because. On Vortex, we kind of were like, okay, we've got every, all the bass tracks down, let's add to it. But it'd be kind of interesting to see where it goes if we've got, like, start with a synth riff rather than start with a guitar riff. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's try and do it so we can do it live and do it all together. So, in other words, you just want to push yourselves in every Not way true. that you can. Yeah. Just mess around and find out. And keep right. confusing each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, keep, stay confused. Stay everyone. confused out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. This uh, this is another question for Matt. Uh, what's your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> Bulbasaur. Oh, there it is. Because <laughs> yeah. he's great. number one. Number so, one the way and he's cute. He probably smells like onions. <laughs> <laughs> That's just you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Are any of you guys going to get tattoos at the tattoo show? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to find a guy to tattoo my lips, but the same color that my lips already are. He's going to go over the whole thing. And I'm yeah, gonna he's been talking about this I'm gonna for years. I'm going to see if it gives me difficulty in singing a little bit later. That's all. So you, you just want to make it harder, basically. I, I guess, but it's also kind of badass to get a tattoo... <laughs> Or you play and something the way that it already is. He wants big swollen lips and see if he sounds better. <laughs> it hurts. So if I trouble yeah, I was, I was just hoping just to get a real tattoo on my leg you know? while I'm playing. <laughs> I was hoping to find an artist that'll actually get up on stage and give me like a tattoo and see how it ends up by the time he's done. Yeah, it's like he yeah. gets one song. You got one song to tattoo me. Whatever he, I get, I get. Well, and with one of your guys' songs, that might actually give them enough time. 
<laughs> yeah, we're gonna play a short one. <laughs> it's a speed run. Yeah, it's a speed run. That'd be a good way to take your mind off the pain. <laughs> Is there any shout outs that you guys would like to make? I'd like to shout out uh, my boy Travis in North Bay. Yeah, and Frodo. <laughs> and Frodo, yeah. yeah, Travis and Frodo. Yeah. We miss you guys. Uh, uh, I'd like to shout out Frederick and uh, Francis yeah. in, um, in Montreal. And uh, anybody that you guys want to shout out? My mom. Yeah. What's up, mom? If you're watching this, I guess or listening. What's up, Jody? Peace. <laughs> shout out to the Kootenays. Shout out to the Kootenays. Yeah, yeah. the Kootenays in general. Yeah. I would say it on the air, but I can't. His name is very derogatory. <laughs> but his name is Phil. Phil Ginther. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but we have a special name for each other. Yeah. That's, that's I, I could just edit it out if you want, but it, what is it? I'm so intrigued now. Patrick, he knows who he is. Shout out Kanto! Right. <laughs> Kanto the caveman! Yes. Yeah. Stu Stu loves you! Yeah. <laughs> and is there anything else that you guys would like to say to our listeners? Try not to roll the peach into the lake again this year. You gotta take out your frustrations a different way. <laughs> Keep listening to that peach pit out there, baby. <laughs> and just to wrap it all up, what advice would you guys give to an aspiring musician? Just do it. <laughs> just do it and never stop, never stopping. Yeah, extreme, extreming. <laughs> There's no such thing as talent, only raw time. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Only raw time. I have bad advice. No, that was good advice from people who know. So... <laughs> Everyone, you've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with Luke, Tegan, and Matt from the Kelowna Trio Farm. Make sure you catch them at the Okanagan Tattoo Show Friday, July 28th, or in September in Nelson at the Massive Music Fest. You guys, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and take care of yourselves. Thank yeah. you, brother. Yeah, yeah really. Love, man. Fuck yeah.